Hey there, everyone. We know it's been a really long time since we've brought you an update on what's going on with the upcoming catamaran build. Yeah, a little, little yeah, too long. Sorry about that. Yeah, a couple months yeah. there. We apologize. Of course, everything that's going on with Elements right now has been at the forefront of what we've been showing in the videos and probably our social media. But behind the scenes, every single night, we're looking at renders, we're sending emails, we're having lengthy discussions. Pretty much every discussion is about the cat. Every discussion is about the catamaran. So that's been behind the scenes, but very much an everyday part of our lives. So we're still going forward with it. And let's see, when we first started putting out the videos, I think six months ago now, we had three top contenders to be our new catamaran for the build. We were looking at the Orem 45R, the Granger Raku 44 and the Shonin Arrow 1360. And what's really cool is when we put out the videos kind of talking about the process and what it would take to do the build, as we were putting that information out to you, we were getting a ton of information back from a lot of you. A little overwhelming at times. A little <laughs> overwhelming, but lots of great information great and ideas. ideas. Yeah. But also in that time, we were contacted by a company out of Vietnam called Max Cruise Marine. And they said, hey, you guys, we saw that you're interested in doing a build and we've got a new catamaran design coming out. So we think that we're producing something that you might be interested in. So after a few weeks of talking to them, which turned into a few months, we, we liked what they had to say enough to add a new contender to what could be our next boat. So what they are coming out with is called the Max 42, which is a 42 foot performance sailing catamaran. And this thing is sexy. Yeah. It's just, it's so it's sleek good looking and yeah. modern. It has the windows that go all the way around. And it's, it's a good balance. It um, kind of shaves off and sands off some of those rough edges we've seen on some of the other high performance boats where it does still give you that kind of that cruisability and livability uh, aboard the boat. So a good salon, good uh, cockpit, uh, steering position, all these different things. It's a it's a performance boat, but it's kind of getting there a little bit closer to like the ideal cruising boat type of thing too. Exactly. So it definitely made our list of contenders. And then after a few more months of discussion, we've narrowed it down to two top contenders now, which is the Max 42 and the Shonin Arrow 1360. First love. Yep, the first love. So within a few weeks, we'll do probably like a breakdown of both boats, kind of talking about everyone in detail and then choosing one. But for right now, we just wanted to give you a quick little rundown on the Max 42. As as quick as possible. As quick so, as Matt can, yeah, which I, as you probably know is not that short. No, no, <laughs> it's, uh, well, I'll try to keep it under an hour. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to say with the Max Cruise though is, if you want to, it's a full production company. So you have the option to go to their website, which is linked in the description below, and you can pick out your catamaran, all of the options, put in the order, they will fully build it for you, they'll deliver it so you get it turnkey ready just as you would any other boat. But if you're like us and you want to do the build, <laughs> you can do that with what they are calling three-dimensional modules. So these 3D molded components, completely different process than what we talked about in our, our previous video, how would you build it, um, with the flat panel construction. Uh, the flat panel construction, it's, it's you have to torture it is what, what they actually call it, where you bend these pieces to try to duplicate a round shape. Um, this is actually, they're molded so they can do the optimum shape, kind of an oval bottom for the hull bottom um, along the sides. Of course, they can they can have those pre-curved type of thing. How they're doing this is it's, it's gonna be a foam cord, resin infused. In this, they're actually using vinyl luster for the hulls and the bulkheads. Um, furniture is still foam cord, but it is a polyester resin. A little bit different than the other boats we've been looking at, which were epoxy. There are some health benefits with going with vinyl ester versus epoxy, and we'll kind of go over that in a later video. Um, and there is a kind of time situation too. It's a little bit quicker to build with vinyl ester because uh, you can set up the catalyst where you can start sanding within minutes instead of having to wait the typical 24 hours for epoxy. So there are some benefits there. But the big thing with going with these molded components, 
the finish. It's gel coated on the exterior. So straight out of the box, straight from the get go, it looks beautiful. It's a professional finish on it. It's a production um, finish. It's a production finish type of thing. So it is, it's a perfect right away. Uh, we've talked to a lot of different people. And again, just mentioned, we got a lot of information, feedback from people that have actually done this whole process before. They say they've spent about a third of their build time with fairing, with with sanding, with fairing, with trying to paint the exterior of the boat. If we can eliminate that, that drops 10 months out of our build time. Which what that, <laughs> yeah. So that's 10 months that we don't have to pay rent. Um, huge savings there. But the big thing with that gel coat exterior too is we are gonna have that benefit of good resale value. We we do okay with painting now if you've seen elements we had it do two or three times before we got an okay yeah. finish i'm still not 100 percent convinced that we can get a perfect finish with it so this allows us to get a perfect finish right from the, right from the start so big benefit there again time wise it's going to shorten the build process eight months ten months type mm -hmm. of thing which would get us back on the water quicker so there's a lot of benefit you guys don't have to watch a sand for 10 months. Because <laughs> do you want to do that for 10 months? No, I, I don't even want to see it, of course. So I can't imagine you'd want to see 10 months of sanding either. So there's a lot of benefits there with having these molded components. And now Matt is going to try and condense it as much as he's able to and just give you a rundown on the process of what it would take to put together this boat once we receive the well, container. Yeah, got to explain how you do this yes, first. Okay. We have to explain how we do it. So with the flat panel, the reason why they do these builds, these these kit builds with flat panels is it's very easy to ship. Of course, you can stack them on top of each other, put them in a shipping container, send them off type of thing. This is a bit different because these are, are complex shapes. These are big pieces. They're 40 foot length. Um, items. So instead of being able to sh send a whole shell, basically the whole exterior of the boat type of thing, which we have looked into having that done, typically it's you know 75,000 to ship from from Asia to the US, it's a big thing. Um, what they've done is they've broken it kind of into pieces. So they're individual components um, that goes into making this whole thing. It does come in two 40 foot shipping containers, so easy to do. You can get them just basically in any port type of thing. Um, inside there is your entire hull, your furniture, dagger boards, rudders, um, four beam, um, catwalk. All of these components are already pre molded, pre done, and in there. Pull them out. Now, how the process works, <laughs> the build process works, is a bit different. So, you level out your form. Get it so it's all spaced out properly because of course that's your foundation for the build most important thing getting it all straight from there you put in the hole pieces there's two hole pieces 40 foot long again plop those in in those hole pieces they are um, you already have your tanks built into there they've been pressure tested but your diesel and water tanks are built into that adds a little rigidity of course to it as well so those are in there the first seam or or yeah yeah the flange basically is about a foot above the water on either side or for above the water line on either side. W how you put them together is there are flanges, um, like I just mentioned. If you guys are familiar with how a, a good boat and a mel, um, um, swan, the swan, oyster. oyster, how they do a hull to deck joint is there's an overlapping piece that goes on, there's the fiberglass piece that goes over the top of the other one. You bond that together, and then on the inside, they end up going through and they fiberglass that. It gets extremely strong joint there. Same process that we're talking about here on the hull sides and on the top and all these different pieces. Difference is it's a four inch flange, so it's a huge bonding surface, and then a few more layers of glass on it too. So it is an extremely strong joint. It's a great way to do it. Um, it's how Almost all boats are actually built, uh, good boats are actually built. It's just that there's a few more flange pieces, a few more or setups with that. Um, those are, again, so it's, it's above the water line, about a foot. From there, we do have the bow pieces go in, um, chamfered pieces or angled pieces for the bridge deck. Bridge deck, bulkheads all go into place, and each one of those, again, is foam cord, vinyl ester, uh, um, uh, resin. With that, you do cove that, and then you do still fiberglass tape those things in, so it creates an extremely rigid structure. On this boat, it's like 14, 15 bulkheads going fore and aft, so again, very, very rigid structure, and that's also tying into those flange pieces as well, so adding some more rigidity there. 
Um, so we do that. Hull sides go on, deck, four beam, catwalk, cabin top, cockpit, and there's actually a module for the shower. So that's all gel coated and looks perfect type of thing. That plops into place, hopefully before we put the deck on. I yeah. forgot about that. Um, that needs to go in there before the deck goes in. And then you have things like your um, the daggerboard cases and rudders and all those types of things you end up putting in as well. And you have this full, beautiful exterior. What the numbers that I'm seeing um, from people that have done something similar to this is they are doing it within a matter of weeks. They're getting this boat so from the exterior, if you were to walk up to it, it looks like it's completely done. It looks like it's a, a finished boat type Minus of thing. Minus the electronics. Minus the, <laughs> everything else. But uh, the shell from is the exterior type of thing, we should, within two months roughly, yeah. have it completely put together. It's going to look perfect. And then we can start on, on the interior design, going through and doing the mechanical part of it. So we get, still get that satisfaction of putting the thing together designing some of the interior things, uh, building that out, of course, doing all of our mechanical stuff uh, from the engines to the electrical to plumbing and all those different all things are all things that we're going to do. We get to go through and figure out, but it just gives us kind of a, a jump start and uh, gets us, like I said, back on the water quicker. So now that Matt has given a rundown on how this boat is put together, slightly different than the others, let's go over the layout of the boat. Yes, we'll start with the exterior. Um, big thing with this is they did still make a good cockpit, a good livable cockpit. Um, so many of the performance boats that I've looked at and we've been aboard and, and, and we, we've, we've seen at different boat shows and stuff like that, they optimize the sail handling. So very, very good sail handling, great to get to the steering wheels, that kind of stuff. But they it leaves a lot to be desired with lounging livability. space, uh, livability. When you're sitting there at anchor, there just isn't those big settees and those big areas to lay. This, they've done kind of a good compromise between those two. Um, so we do have large lounge areas in this, which I, we have to be honest, that is still very, very important for us. Um, we want something that handles sails well, but we also want something that's gonna be comfortable for us as well. Um, they do have multiple helm options. You can do two aft helms if you're going to be racing this boat quite a bit. Two aft helms is a great location for them. You're able to see good sight lines and all those things. We wanted something a little bit different, so they are doing a raised helm position. The raised helm position is they're kind of taking advantage of the new Jaffa um, articulating steering wheel. Uh, so with that, you can put the steering wheel in the normal position, so the raised position, sit on that nice bench, have a great view all around. You have all your controls for um, the, basically the electric winch, all those different yeah, all things. The lines all their lines are position. in there. So it's a great place to helm from. But in bad weather, you can actually take that steering wheel, pull it down 90 degrees, and steer from within inside the cockpit, so within that protected area of the cockpit. And again, with all of the windows around, there's still great visibility looking forward when you're in the cockpit position. Yeah, so it's kind of best of both worlds for us. I think that's the direction. If we go this way, that's what we would end up choosing that's is what that we're option. At, yeah. yeah. Um, with that, you do have a little bench in front of that, um, kind of the area you would sit if you were down below, steering down below type of thing. Um, on the star or on port side, you have a long settee. It's about six and a half feet wide. Again, nice, comfortable thing. The aft area is it's a bad basically. <laughs> That's gonna be back our there. lounge area. Yeah, it's a huge lounge area aft, um, so very, very comfortable. It has a backrest that you can flip either direction. By that, I mean you can kind of flip it back. And when we're at anchor and the dinghy's down from the davits, you can sit there and face backwards, still have your backrest, but face backwards and just have this amazing view. When you're sailing, flip it back to the normal position where your legs are, are in the cockpit area, so you're nice and protected there. But it gives kind of like the best of both worlds there. One of the great things that the Max 42 offers and is very important to me, probably Matt as well, and a lot of catamaran owners, <laughs> is the open air access. So when you're on the bridge deck and going between the companionway, all of the doors there can completely open for a fully, fully open space. So the two doors slide outboard, and then in the center there is a pillarless frame, which can go up into the overhead of the cockpit 
In the render here, you'll see that there is an island in the center with access from the interior, although the island does sit in the cockpit. You can get it with the island, you can get it without the island. Um, I think we'd be leaning more towards going without just to have that fully opening space. Just, uh, yeah, just that view. Just all and, of that, oh. yeah, open yeah. floor space yeah. in the view. And then also the windows forward open, the, there's hatches that open up, which allow more airflow from the front when you're at anchor, just kind of blowing all the way through. So, so it feels like you're living outside type of thing. Living outside and, and just, just almost like doubles your living space there when you're on the bridge deck. Yeah, after being on the island spirit where we kind of experienced that full aft open area, that is something that, that yeah. does really appeal to us. Especially when you're in the warmer climates. And maybe not so much for Norway, unless you're bundled up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but at least it closes. So but, you can yeah. close it off and still heat the inside if you need to type of yeah. thing. Thing. But what that does, that leads us into the salon and into the galley, which the galley is something I have looked at a million different catamarans. This is the first time I've actually seen this type of setup. It is, the uh, best way to describe it, it's basically like they took the galley that normally would, if you if you built a boat that had the galley down in the hulls, a catamaran with a, uh, a uh, galley in the hulls type of thing, and moved that same galley up to the bridge deck. That's basically what it is. So it's these two huge, 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 very long linear galley um, running over on the port side. What that does is the furthest port one is five feet wide, and that separates the two stairs basically leading down into the holes. Um, but in that we do have like so something like the stove would be there and of course a bunch of storage, storage there as well but just food. again huge counter space five feet that is larger than what we had in elements totally um so this would be just a huge thing just having that much but next to that is a seven foot long galley kind of that little peninsula that goes off of the um the l-shaped settee something i um, can throw a human sushi board on ugh. <laughs> no, we are not doing that not contaminating with that butt cheeks um so uh <laughs> On that, Get that image out of your head. On that, uh, that seven foot long uh, uh, galley there, we would still have, I, I think the, the plan was is for the sink to be there. Mm -hmm. You'd have two fridges underneath there, kind of front opening fridges, yep. a bunch of extra storage in there. But it's just this massive galley. I've never seen a cat this size with a bridge deck galley that, 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 that much space. That much space it is huge. Yep. Big thing was, is I mean, we like to cook, but not that much our, our focus Maybe really is on we'll lounging galley. yeah yeah we're really focusing on the lounging part of it and they did a good job it looks like of still keeping that good lounging space so again because it's some fun galley on that side of course it's it's twin it's opposite um for where the settee is is seven feet long then and then it's about six wide for that l-shaped settee which should be plenty of room for us to be able to lay down um, be comfortable there. Yeah, put the table down, turn it into a large bed on passage so that one person is always up. Yeah, so just a huge amount of space there. Should be able to have a bunch of guests with that. Um, put more chairs around it. It's a big table as well. Um, a meter and a half by a meter. Um, so massive, massive uh, table there. Next to that, they do have, it's kind of small, but uh, they do have a forward facing nav desk. So it's still a great setup. Be awesome just can actually have a real office chair so more back issues of trying to do it on the couch <laughs> yeah, type on the of thing couch. Yeah. I mean forward. <laughs> yeah so much much more comfortable setup for her there next to that will be our kind of electrical panel there and then after that leading down to the um the starboard hull is some additional storage probably entertainment, entertainment center, center that kind of thing yeah. there uh the configuration they do have three different configurations if you go with their interior package. Um, the one that we'd be looking at is the three cabin setup. So on the starboard side is owner suite, um, queen size bed um, with that, shower, those types of things over there. On the port side, they have the the module, kind of that, that, that gel coated piece that I was talking about is the shower that's in between the two. So it's shared between those two cabins on the um, port side forward is a double berth and then aft is another queen so plenty of space and she means we can have gas i know that she is couldn't do an element that really is one of the big catalysts one of the big reasons why we wanted to switch boats period is because we want to be able to bring guests aboard um, have friends have family have patrons come 
Um, so it is something that, that's very, very important on this, is having something that's going to be comfortable for people. This seems like this is going to be a great option for it. We'll let them battle it out over <laughs> what cabin <laughs> uh, type of thing, rock, paper, scissors, whatever it takes. But to uh, get that figured out, but it should be a great boat to have people aboard, um, lots of storage in it, because we have it's like the first 10 or 12 feet or something like that are watertight bulkheads on either side. The whole aft of the boat is going to be watertight bulkheads as well. So there's huge buoyancy there, but those do kind of make some storage area for things like things like the fenders and for extra sails, those types of things. things so yeah. just again, a ton of space for us, especially transitioning from a 37 foot mono hull type of thing. It's going to be huge, mm -hmm. absolutely huge. What I'm not sure Matt mentioned is, or maybe he did at the beginning, is you get the option of interior layout. So if you want two owner's hulls, if you want both sides to be owner suites, you could do that. You could go with the option we're looking at, which is one side of an owner suite and then the two cabin layout on the other side. Or if you've got a big family or expect to have lots of people aboard or all the charter. time yep. or charter, you can go with the charter option and have the four cabins. So really any interior layout in the holes. And that's kind of the different thing with this boat is there are so many different ways you can configure it. Just mentioned that the different layout options, I previously mentioned that you could do the dual helms mm -hmm. or the, the um, raised helm position. You can do mini keels or dagger boards. Mini keels are about three foot draft on this. You can do fixed rudders, kick up rudders. Um, you can do the different propulsion, so you can do diesel, um, electric, they do have set up for that. And they do have the option that we're, we're really excited about is doing the outboards. Um, there are two pods that go underneath the bridge deck type of thing. It looks like it should be a great configuration for the way that we cruise and the way that we sail. So that's, yeah. That's the yeah, mechanical propulsion, then there's oh. also sail drive. Yeah. And what the Max 42 is looking at, which I don't think many other production companies have thought of necessarily is offering different rigs. So what comes standard is the 68 foot air draft. And that's, I think what about most boats that size travel on, but they thought ahead a little bit. And since we are probably gonna be starting on the Gulf coast or the East coast of us, there's lots of people that do travel those waters or use inland waterways, need to find little hurricane holes. <laughs> Just opens up a lot of possibilities. <laughs> they also offer a 62 foot air draft, but the really cool thing too is because there's an overlapping jib, you really don't lose much power with that. Yeah, it's still looking into it, but it looks like the polars for it are going to be basically the same for those two things. And it's the beauty of having a light, easily driven hull is the fact that you can reduce a little bit of the sail area, put it down, it's not as high aspect of course, but uh, cut it down a little bit and still have those speeds and still have those abilities without really compromising the performance of it. So as you can see, there are so many options on this. Uh, hopefully this quick rundown has given you a good feel of this new boat because I don't think it's really been shown much out there. No, we not. might be the first ones to kind of introduce it to the world. World, world release. <laughs> world premiere yeah, world here. Premiere. So you can see why it has so many positives and why it made its way into our list of top two contenders now, which again, we'll do another breakdown video between the Shonen Aero 1360. And yeah, the with a lot more information, there's a lot of stuff that I really want to talk Matt's about. Matt's like really I, like itching because yeah. he wants to talk about details, but this was supposed to be an overview, but we're very excited to hear what you think about it. So make sure to drop a comment below, let us know what you think. But otherwise, um, stay tuned for a few more episodes when we do like the head-to-head -head battle and pick a winner.